every chartered accountant every chartered accountant in dubai or in other region and more important there are certain laws which are being already implemented by other countries provide insight to the members that how they can visualize the future coming for the provisions in their country and they can also educate their clientele as well as their <clears throat> organization that what kind of operations can be planned tax efficiently so wonderful evening to all of you and i am hope that everyone will get benefit out of this uh, today's webinar and will add value or knowledge for himself and for his organization with that i wish all of you a very good learning session today over to you asna thank you sir thank you so much so a brief introduction of mr hani before i hand over the mic to him mr hani has been a head of tax and zakat associate tax partner with um, dhruva he's been nominated by the itr for an in house tax director of the year prior to joining dhruva he is also been with a group head of direct and indirect tax of altair group and prior to that he was with nissan as a head of tax for middle east so whom can we get a sound practical knowledge of gaining information about gcc with the tax uh, developments be getting uh, so much of uh, hype around and gcc is trying to cover as much as possible with uh, oman uh, giving up a news of you know personal tax and um, we all know what's happening in the uae regime saudi with zakat so let's uh, catch up with all these new updates and hani will take us through the entire gcc most of the most important is he's going to brief us with what is the tax update for the next one hour so if you have any questions do reach out to him after the session kindly mute yourself during the session and any questions you can post in the chat box or after the session we can take up your questions over to you hani thank you thank you ashina thank you everyone and and uh, really honor to be invited for this uh, evening webinar uh yeah my as as a quick introduction my name is hani nagar i'm uh, assistant tax partner focusing on in middle east and gcc countries with uh, wts druva i'm in the region here now more than 20 years uh moved from country to country but uh, was managing all type of taxes across the gcc and middle east region uh first of all accept my apologies because i know that we should be connected uh, last week but because of some health issues that i apologized on last minute so i apologize for that again um uh, for today uh, uh because we only have one hour so i tried hard to cover the main tax update uh, especially on case a qatar oman and egypt uh if we speak about each country tax system or regime we will need for each country at least one week webinar so not one hour or one day so uh, uh i will try to cover as much as i can from the recent updates and in the middle of course i will try to touch upon some also practice uh, issues or experience that we we i noticed or i faced uh like communicated also if you have any questions please uh, let's try to keep it as end of webinar if we have time we i will be more than happy to answer if not then we can connect and answer question by question sending our uh, response to you okay so let me share my screen and uh, please confirm once you can see it's fine good so let's start with uh, ksa maybe uh, uh, some of us or maybe already all of us here with some two uh, important update happened in case a in past months one of them related to special economic zones and as other one related to regional headquarters uh, which uh, in abbreviation we always say rhq 
I will take you through the main uh, main aspects for each uh, to which I am calling them as a tax incentive. And of course, it's a tax update, but mainly it's incentive for the investor or foreign investor or local investor also to explore more. Uh, special economic zones in Saudi, the, uh, based on their 2030 vision, uh, they are trying to attract more uh, foreign investment in the country. And one of the uh, one of the tools that, that we are using now is creating special economic zone. Special economic zone, they have four special economic zone already created. But if we focus of if we speak about what will be the main incentive for a special economic zone, first one regarding corporate tax, it will be five percent. In Saudi now, uh, it's already uh, now if we already aware about the corporate tax in Saudi, it's a twenty percent. And for the care rate, it's 2.5%. So for a special economic zone entities, if they are established, un established under one of these special economic zone, corporate tax will be 5%, it, but it will be granted till for 20 years maximum. So it will not be indefinitely or forever. With holding tax also, it will be 0% on repatriation of the profit uh, from a special economic zone to any foreign country. Currently, the withholding tax in Saudi, it's from 55 to 20% based on the category and the item. I will cover this withholding tax in one of the slides later. Custom duties, also they have some incentive. Saudization, if we, we are familiar about the term of Saudization, it's a requirement in Saudi to hire a, a local citizen. So for Saudization also, it's uh, for under, for special economic zone, it's uh, flexible. And for first five years, you will not be follow the condition or requirement for Saudization. In some of the activities there in Saudi now, the Saudization percentage reached to 100%, and some 70%, and some 50%, and some 30%. It based and depends on the activities you are performing. For special economic zones, you will have a relief for five years. VET, it will be 0% for all goods exchange within the, between the special economic zone entities, okay? What are the, the special economic zone now in Saudi? We have four special economic zones. The first one, King Abdullah Economic City, and this under each economic zone, the special economic zone authority already identify the activities that you can perform under each zone. For King Abdullah Economic City, Kayak, mainly it will be uh, uh, industry, uh, uh, like diverse industry, like logistics, manufacturing, energy, uh, energy, tourism. The, the second economic zone, which KC, the Knowledge Economic City, it's a knowledge bridge hub for education, research, and innovation. Then the third one for Jazan Economic City, GEC, it's mainly for energy, petro petrochemical, tourism, and light manufacturing. Prince Abdul Aziz bin Masoud Economic City, also it will be some of the activities including light industries, logistic, technology, and again, it, same incentive for all uh, zone it will be granted. Now in Saudi, the special economic zone, it was based in, in, in some communication, some uh, press release and a brochure from uh, uh, Minister of Investment. But now they already have a special economic zone authority and they already have a team there. And even they have already, already also created and established a tax policy team. So she can monitor and manage the, the tax uh, uh, compliance and incentive. Okay. The other, the other main update under the incentive uh, regime in Saudi, RHQ. And this is very hot, hot topic now and hot discussion now across the region, especially from UAE because we have already in UAE many RHQ there, here. So previously, the RHQ when, when introduced by Saudi government, they were only mainly focused on the tax, on the client, sorry, on the companies which is, they are dealing with the governmental bodies. So 
they released an official uh, regulation saying that it will be forbidden for any company which have a RHQ outside KSA to get into transaction or a deal with the governmental body unless they have a RHQ there in KSA. So it was at this time, it was a must to deal with the RHQ if you have RHQ outside KSA to move it or to open an RHQ in KSA. However, after, after that, Saudi, they used RHQ tool to show some incentive also to bring other RHQ, which can be reform activity inside KSA, and they will grant them a huge incentive. So quickly, if we have, if we look at the timeline or the, the history or the, the road of RHQ, in 2021, Saudi government already announced there is a RHQ program. February 2022, MIC, Minister of Investment released the guidelines issued, including the condition for acquiring a license for RHQ. And then December 2022, we have a CD cabin decision. It's mainly regulated for governmental entities contracting with the company, and they listed down all the condition or the criteria. December, December 2023, the royal decree released with the tax incentive for RHQ, and in the same royal decree, they already re re released. When they released, they already referred. There is a, a detailed one will be issued by Zatka for the, all the tax aspect, which already released by Zatka in February 2024, and it's include a detailed detailed compliance and condition and requirement for RHQ. So RHQ, to get a license as RHQ inside KSA, you must operate as a registered foreign companies or a branch in South. The, main, the one of the main condition and, and, and important condition, you should maintain at least two subsidiaries outside both Saudi and the country of incorporation. So if you don't have at least two subsidiaries, then when you apply for uh, RHQ license, it can be rejected. Okay, and there is some also license fees which uh, uh, reduced from ten thousand SAR to be two thousand SAR. Uh, it can be valid for five years. Uh, all of this administration benefits already granted to the RHQ. But let's focus more on the tax incentive and the requirement and how you can lose this incentive and how to mitigate or to avoid. Okay. So RHQ license, if you are maintaining RHQ license, you must engage with one from the one from the mandatory activity and three from the optional activities. I will show the next slide what will be the mandatory activities and what will be the optional activities. Okay, so this is a must as a starting point for you to get such incentive, tax incentive. If we go for tax incentive, what will be what will be the tax incentive there for RHQ? First of all, you will have a zero income tax rate on eligible income. Okay. Uh, by the way, also because there is some discussions in past days uh, with Zatka in Saudi, uh, for RHQ, it, the same incentive will be granted to the care buyer, but they recently clarified that it will not be applicable to the care buyer. It will be only on for tax buyer. So for any Zakka buyer in Saudi, he will not get any incentive, tax incentive under RHQ regime. Okay? So 0% income tax rate, it will be for 30 years. And also we have a 0% withholding tax on dividends and payment to related or unrelated non-resident non -resident party for necessary services. They also have some... Uh, other extra incentive like residency. There is a year program there in Saudi called a year program. They start to give even incentive for the staff who will be moved to work in RHQ to encourage them to work there in Saudi and stay in Saudi. Before you, it's for if you are bringing your son as an example, 18 years maximum to have an ikama for him. Now it's relaxed to be, you can bring your even dependent for till 25 years 
independent dependent fees that will be waived. So they are even encouraging from from family from family perspective even to bring people or senior people experienced people inside KSA. There is many fees waived or waiver. So Minister of Investments they are waiving for investor service center uh, rate for service. Saudization also similar to special economic zone, which we uh, discuss also. So Saudization there is a relief for 10 years from Saudization requirement. So if you have an RHQ in Saudi, you can hire 100% non-Saudi for 10 years, of course, which also one of the encouraging points there because you will not suffer to find a suitable Saudi candidate and meet the percentage and meet the requirement. There is also other support like other service, uh, uh, person, uh, personal service from other societies there. But if we move, if we speak about the mandatory activity and the optional activity, which is very important. So mandatory activity for RHQ, we have provision for of strategic direction and management function, in, including formulate and monitor the regional strategy, coordinate strategic alignment, uh, support acquisition, merger, uh, review financial performance. And also there is a regional headquarter or management function include business planning, budgeting, business coordination, uh, market opportunity, uh, mark, regional market competitor operation, market plans, operation and financial reporting. All of this mandatory activity, you must choose one of them and you must commence the, the, the work for such activity within six months from the date of getting the license for RHQ. If a failure happens, then such incentive, such license can be an a risk and can be cancelled. Okay. In addition, the one of the act of, uh, uh, mandatory activities that you will choose, you need to choose another three optional activity. Three option activity. There is the list here in front of us: sales and marketing support, human resources, training service, financial management, compliance and internal control, accounting and auditing, advisory, legal research. Technical support, network operation, IT. If we if we, if if we look if we looked at this operation uh, optional activity, we can find it's cover most of our most of the company activities as a supporting or RHQ or a head office. Okay. For oper for optional uh, activity, you need you must choose three as I mentioned, and you must commence that these three optional activity within before end of the first year of receiving the license of, uh, from MISA or Minister of Investment in Sound. So in summary, you have one mandatory activity you need to choose, three optional activity you need to choose, the mandatory activity you must commence within three within six months from getting the MISA license, and the optional one you must commence before end of the first year from receiving the uh, MISA license, okay? Another condition needed, you must have at least 15 full-time employees hired and be based in Saudi. This includes also senior management. Senior management or senior level must be at least three. Three such as executive director, CFO, vice president, based on the activity, of course, you are, you will, maintain an RHQ in Saudi. There is also other important tax aspect released by ZATCA. So RHQ must register within ZATCA as usual, uh, as usual tax payer or ZAKA payer. He need to register, we he must be registered. Financial statement for each year must be also filed and maintained. RHQ must file an annual tax, if tax and zakat return, as well annual substance requirement report. Okay. Now, because recently, as I mentioned, that because he clarified that the bear will not be entitled or uh, have this uh, 
RHQ incentive, but filing the taxes are carrying it's still there because filing is different from availing the benefit because that can need to review and make sure that you are meeting the other condition to avail the tax benefit. Also, they have they have a, a substance requirement, and you must file a, an annual substance requirement report. RHQ should maintain a separate account if you have any non-illegible activity. You have you must have a separate account to show to Zadka, and also there is some condition to to have uh, uh, thus this uh, uh, non-illegible account uh, activity. Sorry, I will show it to you as as well. That can they have the right to monitor and verify the economic, especially the economic substance requirement. Also, one of the inter good introduced point on that regulation that you can approach that for any clarification or advance ruling. If you have any activity, you have a doubt. If you have any transaction, you have a doubt, and you are afraid to to lose the incentive or to to cancel you cancel the the license for you, then you can approach that to get their advanced ruling and have comfort in the future that you will not face any issue. Penalty and fine, it will be the same as current uh, local regulation about non-filing the return if you are disclosing wrong information. So penalty will be also applicable for RHQ. Going to substance requirement for RHQ, okay, not in general, because that can also Listed down the main criteria or main condition to have a, uh, to have a substance and provide and file the substance annual report. So, first of first one must hold a valid license issued by Minister of Investment, which we call MISA. And it's in the license, it will be listed down the activity or activities that you already applied for. Okay. Second, you must have a premises and, and, and a suitable one for the business activity. So it, it will not be, of course, logic if you have 15 employees, including senior management, and you have five, six activity, and you have only one, one uh, maybe 15 square meter feet office with two desks, and that's it. This is not a substance in front of that kind because you are performing some activity and you need people, you need staff. So you should have an adequate substance a premises there. And of course, board decision, management decision, any any decision should be should be within or directed by KSA RHQ. So if you have already RHQ in KSA and you are availing such benefit, so don't come later and show to Zatka or Zatka discover that in you are in UAE you are managing this uh, activity for KSA or for another country. So also we should be, be careful about uh, releasing decision, signing the decision, signing the contract agreement should be also from KSA premises or from KSA uh, team. Uh, of course, must must generate revenue. You need to generate revenue from your activity, legal activity in KSA. Must have at least one director resident in KSA. Uh, number of employees that I mentioned, at least 15. Uh, one of the substance also uh, requirement, which a little bit tricky, uh, that also highlighted and requested that employee must have requisite a qualification and skills necessary to execute their duties. And verbal discussion with some people on uh, the Zatka team, uh, they, they told us, yeah, logically again, if you are performing uh, accounting and IT uh, uh, activity for RHQ. And we found the, the, the team or the employees that you hired, uh, engineer or uh, civil engineer or uh, market marketing certificate, something like this. So it will, it will not match the qualifications, the people that you hired, it not, will not match the activities that you are performing. So it can put also the put also the license or the incentive under the risk. So we need to be very careful about substance, economic substance requirement to get the, the RHQ benefit or RHQ to maintain the RHQ license. Okay. So what will happen for non-compliance with economic substance? 
So one of the, if that can realize later that there is no adequate substance based on the report you will file or the, the audit they will do or investigation or some information. So that can then will give you a 90 days as a corrective period. So you will send you a notice saying that you have 90 days to correct it, please correct it within these 90 days. And it will be immediate penalty with 100,000 Saudi Riyal. If you didn't correct it or repeat it again, so a penalty will be 400,000 Saudi Riyal and can be eliminate or uh, uh, waive or the incentive for you for uh, tax from tax incentive to be, of course, uh, waived and can also uh, put your license under risk from MISA that can be also cancelled as well. So we need to monitor very well uh, if, if we have any issue about substance to correct it quickly, even before Zatka discovered. And if Zatka discovered, then you have only 90 days to correct. And if it's, if, if it's already corrected, please monitor and control not to be repeated again. Okay. This is the main four pillars that can put your license under the risk and to be cancelled. So, first one, not initiating the required regional headquarter license mandatory activity, which I mentioned before, that if you, if you if you didn't commence the the the, uh, the activity within six months. If you don't have the number of employee, if you don't have the uh, optional activity before end of the year, it can all it, this all of them can cancel your uh, license as RHQ. And if if your license got cancelled by MISA in Saudi, it will be very difficult to get it again. If if you have some mandatory act, uh, if you have a mandatory activity and disconnect it, and you have optional activity and disconnected at any time of the year, this can also put your license under the risk. And you need to correct it quickly, and you need to also to inform MISA what is the reason of have this disconnection and how we will fix it or when you can be fixed or corrected. This is the most Important to other ones, stop complying with regional headquarter license requirement at any period. This is also, if you read it, it will be the same, related to the same. Uh, breaching any license regulation also will be the same. So, in summary, for cancellation of license, till now, of course, uh, because it is still new uh, and some of the company already created or set up the RHQ in Saudi, there is no cancellation of license released by Saudi, by MISA, our Minister of Investment there. However, it will be, it's, it's a, they are very serious about controlling and monitoring the activity for RHQ. Uh, and from our practice experience, on ground experience, they will have a very uh, uh, control, uh, uh, either visit or by visit or by reviewing the activity in the market. Uh, they have a very powerful tool to use it and make sure that you are complying with the RHQ requirement and are not breaching any uh, any regulations here. If happen, then immediately they will immediately they will cancel your uh, license. And of course, if your license got canceled, automatically all the tax incentive will stop and nothing will really go for. There is some exceptions for RHQ uh, RHQ required. So. Mainly, it's related to the governmental body there. So they have, we have four ex four exceptions. The first one, government can can engage with any entity which don't have RHQ in Saudi, if the project estimated less than one million SAR, or the project can be implemented outside KSA. Remember when when we start the discussion on RHQ. I mentioned that Saudi government, in the beginning, they put a condition that for any uh, foreign company which have RHQ outside KSA, they, they were not able to perform or engage by any governmental authority in KSA unless they have RHQ. Okay? But on the new guidelines released by MISA, by, by cabin decision, they listed down four exceptions. The first one, which I mentioned now, they can, this is a direct exemption. 
there is also another one as a bid invitation the government can invite for a company which is you don't have RHQ in KSA for two cases in two cases there is an absence of more than one qualified competitor having RHQ in KSA or in emergency cases so governments they have the right to 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 bid or send the bid invitation for companies don't have RHQ if there is none, there is no competitor in the market with the same qualified activity there. Okay. Another exception for public bidding exception, the government can accept the bidding from multinational companies, which you don't have RHQ in KSA, in, in two cases. Absence, the absence for of more than one technically acceptable proposal. So if they already received technical proposal, but it's not accepted, they can accept the bidding from foreign companies or multinational companies without RHQ. If their technical bidding is better than technical one from the RHQ in KSA. The other one, the proposal best price or best offer, 25% lower from other offers that they received or from RHQ in KSA. Also, there is a for, the fourth uh, exception, direct contracting. So government, government agency can invite multinational directly <clears throat> to contract only on two cases also. If the work are exclusively available from the company or related party without regional headquarters. So they, they didn't find such a, a, a business that can be, can be performed from RHQ inside KSA, so they can have a direct contract with non-RHQ in KSA. Again, also the second one as exception as in emergency cases. No one knows if you ask me, if, uh, what is this emergency case? No one knows about it because it's a commercial, pure commercial decision. Maybe they put it intentionally to, to be flexible with multinational company, which is they don't have RHQ in KSA and they can engage them or uh, hire them. Okay. So this is mainly for two main incentive or two main discussion, uh, hot topic discussion in Saudi market for special economic zone and uh, for RHQ. Second topic for KSA, there is a new Zaka bylaw or regulation released in Saudi. Quickly, Zaka, it's, it's, uh, it's a system on, on GCC and KSA uh, citizen or local. So if you are a GCC national or Saudi national, you will be subject to Zaka rules or guidelines in KSA. Zaka, Zaka calculation is totally different from tax calculation. And, and it's mainly, uh, uh, or in summary, it's based on your net wealth. And it's also calculated on some of balance sheet items, not like tax, income, income statement. Yes, income st statement is a starting point, but for Zaka, it, we are considering also some adjustment based on the financial statements and other aspects. If you are uh, non-GCC or non-Saudi, uh, non then you will be subject to tax. If you are mixed in between, you will be subject to mix. So if we have a company, have a GCC national as a shareholders with 50% or Saudi, and we have 50, other 50% owned by non-GCC national, then you will, the com your company in KSE will be subject to 50% tax and 50% zakat. In Saudi, they have only one tax and zakat form. But the, inside the form itself, there is a categories. One category for main adjustment and one for tax and then one for zakat. So based on the calculation, based on the percentage of ownership, you need to calculate either tax or zakat or both. Okay. The new, new zakat regulation, it's, it's a totally different from the old one. And it will require, as I mentioned, for each topic here, it will require another, uh, maybe one week a webinar, not one day. But generally, in the new Zakar regulation released in Saudi, what they did, the, the, the Zatka and the Minister of Finance, they collected all the practice and, 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 and issues that they faced in previous years, 
and they try to fix it here in the news in new Zika regulation. So they started to clarify more about the MBOE benefits, about the provisions, about the assets, about the trading, the CAP-based calculation. What is the financial statement balances that you will start or the, you will you will ca calculate the CAP based on it? Is it ending balance or opening balance? So they decided to be like financial statement, it will be closing balance. Before it will, some of the item opening balance, ending balance, difference between or ending balance, closing balance. So this in the Zakat regulation, new Zakat regulation, they clarify more. They also clarify about liabilities, uh, deductible assets, uh, non-current liability, what is the treatment, what what is the provision it charges during the year? How can be how can be accepted as an expenses? Uh, they introduced even some new deductible uh, items like raw material, statutory deposits, treasury bills, uh, employee saving plans. All of this new introduced as a deductible uh, item was of course with some certain conditions there. Uh, Minimum, uh, uh, max, minimum the, uh, the, the minimum of the cap is how to be calculated, the methods that you need to follow to calculate the zakat, liability or the cap is. Okay. One um, very, very important uh, changes or update also in Saudi uh, related to transfer, transfer pricing as well as zakat. So Saudi case is introduced or the amend do some did some amendment on the TB guidelines in Saudi. So TB guidelines that the two main uh, uh, amendment happen that the TB guidelines will be applicable to Zaka bear as well. Before it was only applicable to taxpayer, but now they introduced another <coughs> applicability to be applicable to Zaka bear starting from 1st of January this year, 2024. And they also introduced EBA, Advanced Pricing Agreement, which was not before, but they introduced as well starting from January 2024. So for the cap payer, we have two phases. Phase one, which will be applicable from 1st of January 2024, we have, if you have a transaction with the related party lower than 48 million Saudi real, so TB guidelines will not be applicable. If you have more than 48 million voluntary, you can apply the TB guidelines like local file, master file, whatever. However, above 100 million SAR, it's a mandatory to be uh, to apply or to uh, implement the TB guidelines for the Zakat Bank. This is the phase one. Phase two, same for 48 million below, it will not be applicable. However, for above 48, it changed from voluntary to be a mandatory now. And 100 million is still as it is as mandatory. Phase two, it will be implemented from 1st of January, 2027. That case, they introduced one, uh, one uh, exception here for investment funds. So investment funds will be exempted from compliance obligation in phase one, okay? However, in phase two, it will be included. So the, the TB compliance for all the cap now in Saudi, based on the phases that we described now, we have local file, master file, country by country report, country by country notification. The liberation of local file, master file, CBC, uh, report CBC notification, it's a must based on, based on the TB guidelines. However, submission for local file and master file to Zatka, it will be based on upon Zatka request for the Zatka bear. Okay. Country by country, either report or notification, you must file uh, CBC based uh, through Zatka portal. And of course, for Saudi headquarter groups with consolidated revenue only exceeding 3.2 billion SAR, who will be eligible for such uh, filing. Uh, and for CBCR notification, only for entities are part of a multinational group, must file the CBC notification. So CBC notification, if you are part of multinational group, you must file uh, this notification to Zatka. 
for report itself only for uh, headquarter uh, company with revenue more or exceeding 3.2 billion Saudi Arabia. Also corporate income tax in Saudi, there is an, they already introduced a new, totally new corporate income tax and it's already released for public consultation and already closed now and they already received the, the feedback from the market. Uh, uh, what we are hearing also from uh, unofficial, of course, from uh, people in Zadka or in the market, they are trying to introduce it uh, to be implemented from financial year starting from 1st of January 2025, which next year. Uh, and the plan was uh, that the, such a law, it will be released uh, by maximum August or September, but it seems because they already released the Zaka, new Zakaa regulation, there is also withholding tax changes happened in the Saudi market. Uh, this RHQ, uh, Special economic zone. All of these changes in the market, they are trying this. The, the, it holds that to, to release officially the new law, but it's already there. If someone interested, please drop me an email or a message. I can share with you a detailed uh, proposed law for your record, or you can if you if you want to read it as well. However, main point covered by, uh, in the proposed new law, they have different now. Uh, Definition of residency, uh, based on subject to tax, also they did some changes. Source of income, they listed down detailed uh, aspect of source of income. Uh, they are now in, uh, really introduced permanent establishment in details in the new law. Related parties, they have a full section for related parties. They have another section, dedicated section for exempt income. Interest deduction, there is a detailed process and detailed calculation for interest deduction. Transfer pricing, a totally detailed new section for transfer pricing and participation exemption. If we if we if we if we can notice that Saudi based, based on this new uh, new income tax law, sorry, new corporate tax law, they try to make it a little bit near to UE after UE introduced uh, CT. Because they introduced now in Saudi on this uh, new proposed law, participation exemption, as an example. We have in UE, but it was not there in KSA. Uh, interest deduction or limitation. There is, yeah, before in Saudi, you have a calculation, but not detailed guidelines or detailed provision. They also introduced BOM, Brace of Effective Management, in the new proposed law. Berman established admits itself now in detail, it becomes in detail in, 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 in new proposed law. Also, one of the changes they are proposing the withholding tax uh, regime or withholding tax system. They already changed it recently, and one of the main changes officially released by Zadka for withholding tax, uh, the payment to related party. Before, it was subject to 15%. But Zadka uh, changed the percentage to come to become a five percent as a technical service support service, and they listed down what service should be subject to five percent, not not in general as before payment to related party fifteen percent. No, it will be based on the service rendered or service provided. However, they kept other payment to be as fifteen percent as well. So it's, it's not identified. The nature of surface, it will be subject 15. If identified, it will be subject based on the table as a summary table here in front of us. Okay, on the left side. Of course, this rates, it's based on the local law, but tax treaty uh, benefit will be applicable. So as an example for uh, 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 interest payment, as an example, if we have interest payment, it can be 0% based on the treaty between UE and KSA. So, 5% uh, for reality, some countries, 10% uh, for reality with some countries. Um, so it depends on the uh, tax treaty and that because they are, uh, I will say from my personal experience with them, they are okay for with honoring the tax treaty. Uh, sometimes they are rejecting the application, sometimes they are accepting. Uh, they are a little bit uh, aggressive on reviewing the tax treaty application. 
Uh, by the way, let me also uh, share uh, something with you. Uh, it's very advisable that uh, when it comes to tax treaty, some of the taxpayers, they are taking the position based on the treaty benefits. So if you, if you have a transaction uh, on, in, on dividend or reality, sorry, let's take a reality as an example. If you, have a, if you have a payment related to realities with 15%, and you have a tax treaty between UAE and KSA with 10%, so he filed his monthly withholding tax return on 10%, assuming that he will be uh, he will be legible, eligible for treaty benefit. And later, when that can come to a tax audit, he will provide the document needed. However, 99% 90, 90, of the cases in KSA, when that can come to the audit without having an advance ruling from ZATCA, they always reject the position you are taking or already took. So if you have such a position taken as a taxpayer to be 18%, that because you will say, no, it's subject to 15%. I have the agreement, I have the uh, franchise agreement, I have whatever agreement or contract I have, they are not honoring or accepting it. And also, one of the documents needed in case A to avail tax treaty benefit for MQ7B and TRC, tax residency certificate. And for MQ 7B need to be attested from Saudi MC and, and, and local tax authority from respective country. So as assuming assuming that you spent two, four, five years, and later you want to, to have such a document in place if you didn't get it from day one, it will be difficult, very difficult to obtain. So from, from my personal uh, experience, it's always advisable to get an advance ruling from Saudi, uh, Saudi authority, which Zatka. Uh, when it comes to uh, 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 apply or get any tax treaty benefits. And of course, when you, when you approach that, you need to have the full document package to provide it to them because once if that can reject it from first time and you file it again, they will reject it again. So from, from first time, try to get it and not to confuse them, make it very simple, very, make it very obvious to them that, that you are entitled to get the treaty benefits. Okay. Also, other consideration, or uh, also other uh, on the new proposed law, income tax law, that the, uh, the introduced anti avoidance procedures, like in we have a new E here, GAR. So, that because you have the right now to discard any transaction, uh, they have a doubt about it, or there is no substance, no commercial basis. So, now they have the right based on the new uh, proposed law. To simply reject it. Also, they introduced Pillar Two. They also introduced, uh, of course, the Pillar Two. It's it's a long story, but uh, because some people also uh, they are now asking how come they are introducing Pillar Two and they have such incentive or tax incentive is uh, in our GQ and uh, special economic zone. We will see. We will see what will happen when it's when it's implemented. But Saudi they introduced this Pillar Two already on the proposed new city law now. Merger and demerger, it was not there before. They introduced it now. And they are now giving or granting an exemption for merger and demerger uh, uh, transaction. Capital gain also, capital gain for list for non-listed company now, they already they newly introduced this uh, uh, treatment that the liability will be jointly between the seller and target company for any tax deal. It was not like this before. If the seller uh, non-resident, he will... Uh, will be liable for all tax uh, liability on capital gain. If he's a resident, he can file the tax return. If he's a cap payer, then he will be the cap only, not tax. But now in the proposed new law, they are now make them, all of them joint liable for uh, settling the liability for capital gain. Also, they, are, they already introduced also uh, another law, uh, which you call the cap and tax procedures law. So they combined all the procedures from the care regulation and tax uh, regulation, and they will introduce one law. And they listed down or they covered uh, many, many details, many provisions. Again, same, already this law already released for public consultation, and that got all the feedback from the market. And now we are waiting for to be officially released. Again, the dis same discussion with the local authority. They are targeting to be released to be implemented from January 2025. 
main main topics covered uh, in without going in details for the new draft zaka and tax procedures law tax registration books and documentation tax return uh, payment assessment penalties evasions evasion cases okay so this is for uh, for ksa uh, Again, it's only it's only an update. What 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 is the main discussions or what is the main update happening in the market in KSA market? Uh, there is one one important uh, uh, point also I want to share with you all uh, in relation to transfer pricing in KSA. Uh, Zatka they are they become very very aggressive uh, on when it comes to transfer pricing audit, and now they are. There is many cases, many litigation cases with Zatka because of not accepting the transfer pricing documentation or the analysis or the reports that the tax were already prepared. So if you already have a business in KSA or already planning to have a business in KSA, please be very, very careful from TB because Zatka now they are not focusing on usual. Yeah, usual audit, it's already there. Because of limitations, you need to close any open years within five years. They can send you some queries, you respond to them. Some documents you send them, they can accept or not. But they noticed that one hour spending in TB audit can bring them a revenue for one month spending on other aspects as a usual tax audit. So they become more focused on TB audit now. And they are reviewing each single transaction you may have each single transaction. So please be very careful and prepare yourself uh, uh, for any any tax audit when it comes to uh, TB especially. Moving to Qatar. Qatar, one of, also one of the countries, they, they are now already started to uh, implement or introduce international tax concept. They are trying to be uh, within the same country in the region and internationally as well. There is some new changes happening in, the, uh, in Qatar based on uh, some changes in the executive regulation itself, and they already introduced new corporate tax law. There is many aspects uh, already there in the new regulation and, or the uh, new law. However, quickly, uh, again, main, main change or main update happened, Berman establishment. Now it become wider, they already listed down all the activities can fall under uh, Berman, established, Berman establishment to be created. Uh, even some expenses incurred uh, for the purpose of BE or a branch business, it will be uh, something called as a qualifying or real expense. Okay, so for the listed down the non-deductible items, even you have your BE or a branch, there is a non-deductible item you should avoid as well. Any payment to go to head office, you need to have such item mentioned in the list. There is also uh, uh, many tax treaty, double tax treaty already Qatar uh, uh, signed, especially recently with the GCC like KSE and and, uh, and UE. We have a double tax treaty between uh, these countries and Qatar as well. Uh, Based on the new law, amended tax law, which released in February 2023 this year, Qatar uh, or GTE, GTE, which uh, General Tax Authority in Qatar, they introduced the global global minimum tax rate. Uh, so they are already introducing now the rules and uh, the minimum tax rate. However, it's, it's again, they introduced in the law, but they are referring to be um, a detailed guidelines or uh, cabin decision or uh, Minister of Finance decree uh, to 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 cover uh, for pillar two or global minimum tax rate uh, criteria condition and the process, but it's already uh, introduced on the new uh, uh, law. The new law in Qatar already officially raised, not like Saudi under discussion. In Qatar, it's already raised and implemented from 20 February 2023. Uh, other point, other important also update in Qatar uh, the definition of Berman establishment be. Now in Qatar, they include under the BE definition, the fixed place of business and generating income or profit. And this revised the, and the, 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 from, or little bit different from OECD. BE, defini BE definition and considerably broadens the criteria for determining BE, okay? 
So the the the, the, the wider definition for BE in Qatar. This is based also on some some uh, uh, practice issues or uh, taxpayer issues he noticed in, in in previous year, so they try to uh, control more the BE or the any companies or any uh, uh, re, uh, any company or group coming to Qatar uh, or perform any activity in Qatar, either uh, encourage them to have a legal entity there and avoid LBE risk or to be controlled and monitor any BE, BE, BE activities can be created inside Qatar. We also heard about VET implementation uh, or introduction in Qatar. Uh, this is keep coming and back and forth the discussion in, in official authorities in Qatar. However, it will be, uh, it will be implemented because already Qatar already signed the general agreement for VET within GCC countries. So they must, it must be implemented. However, they keep delaying. And the last or the recent uh, uh, updates that we got from the market, they are trying to reduce it from 2025. It will be the main also, main main concept of VAT, like mandatory business optional. Uh, if your your revenue exceeds 375 real Qatari, then you, you have to register for VAT. Most of the goods and services will be subject the the proposed percentage for VAT it will be five percent. Uh, maybe it can be changed later. We don't know because we have Bahrain different, we have Saudi different, and there is a zero percent VAT also percentage uh, on some some of the business like international transportation goods, uh, hospital, uh, sorry, uh, goods and service exported outside Qatar. There is some exempted. Uh, uh, category like financial service, like uh, education, like. Uh, uh, health care activity. So it will be very similar to other GCC countries like UAE or KSA or Bahrain. Uh, draft law already is here, but we're still waiting to be officially released or uh, published. With holding tax in Qatar, it's only 1% with percentage with 5%. Uh, it will be deducted at source, uh, royalty, benefit commission, service paid to non residents. However, for dividends, uh, it will be 0%. Any dividends paid from uh, a Qatar entity to a non-resident entity, it will be uh, 0%. Merchants of God, of course, uh, not subject. Uh, the withholding tax uh, should be remitted on monthly basis before 16th day of the month following for such, such a transaction. Uh, withholding tax uh, in, 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 uh, in Qatar about the obligation, filing, uh, payment due, almost the same also penalty. Uh, it, it, by the way, uh, recently, uh, you need to file the withholding tax return through GTA portal, which uh, Qatar Tax Authority portal. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if you miss the deadline, of course, you will be automatically received a notification from GTA that there is a penalty on both. Uh, the system in GTE now, uh, or when when they moved from old system in, uh, in Qatar to the new system uh, uh, in the Dariba portal in Qatar, uh, there is a many issues and a lot of issues happened between migra migration uh, between the two systems, uh, and some of these issues still there. Uh, my advice also to you, if you have any issues uh, with any 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 uh, system uh, filing or all the filing not reflected, uh, not to rely on sending uh, emails because GTEs are not, most of the cases are not reading or opening the emails. You need to contact them personally or call them or visit them to fix this issue. Because what we notice also in the market, a huge number of penalties already imposed on the taxpayers and they are not aware or they didn't get any notification through email, it was lying only inside their system and their account in GTA. Transfer pricing in Qatar, it's there. Uh, it will be applicable for turnover more than uh, 10 million in total asset, in your total asset, 10 million real, uh, uh, real Qatar, of course. Uh, and to file, to file the, 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 the TB form or the TB return should be within four months from the end of the financial year of accounting period. Okay. 
Qatar also has a, a TB compliance like master file, local file. The submission deadline for uh, such uh, master file, local file should be within 60 days from filing the tax return. Country by country also reporting CBCR requirement already there in Qatar also, but uh, revenue more than 3 billion for previous year, then you will be an, entitled to file such a notification and report. As I mentioned, income tax uh, already there in Qatar as a corporate income tax. Uh, it changed in, in, in this year and last year also some changes. Exemption only granted for ministries, government bodies, public authorities, international organization, office branches, salaries, wages, allowance, all of this uh, got exemption, but other than this, all should be sub subject to corporate income tax in Qatar. There is a special income tax rate for uh, oil and gas sector, which is 35%. Uh, rather than this, the, the, the tax rate in Qatar is 9%. Uh, sorry, it's 10%. That's why uh, uh, when, you, uh, when you implemented the UAE corporate tax, they choose 9% to be lower than Qatar was 1%. So it will still attractive country from corporate tax perspective. Okay, moving to Oman. Oman, there is a very uh, serious discussion happening now. We hope it will not be implemented about uh, income tax for wages and salaries, which they are now in, uh, discussing to be implementing, uh, implemented from 2025. If it's happened, this will be as the first country in GCC, which it will tax the individual income. Uh, it's, it's already approved from cabinet, but it's still under discussion. I remember also in a couple of years back, they already initiated the same discussion, but kept it on hold. So maybe in GCC, between GCC countries, you will have some discussion around it, and maybe they can be on hold. But now it's become a serious discussion on Oman to introduce the uh, in, uh, personal income tax. Uh, Oman also have a good number of tax treaties. There is one signed in June with Russia. Uh, but uh, comparing Oman from tax treaty number with other GCC countries like UAE, it's much, much lower. And that's why Oman, Oman uh, Minister of Finance now focusing to discuss tax treaty between other countries and try to implement or introduce as much as they can. Uh, uh, portal, the money tax, uh, money tax authority portal, OTA, the, uh, you can file also uh, CBCR notification or reporting through the portal. And uh, till now, we didn't, uh, there is some uh, technical issues happened before, but now it's fixed. Um, and there is some penalties already uh, implemented or already uh, uh, released by our money tax authority, but now it's already waived and uh, eliminated because of such technical issues happened there. Quickly for Egypt, because we already uh, run off time. So in Egypt, they have uh, one of the major important uh, updates in the market e-invoice system, which already implemented in some phases, but now it's mandatory now for all. And uh, there is electronic receipts uh, already start implemented as well, uh, and will be uh, mandatory from uh, January 25. Uh, dividends distributed from listed Egyptian company, it will be subject to flat rate 5% five, 5 of holding tax, either resident or non-resident. Uh, dividend distributed from non-listed Egyptian companies, it will be subject to 10% was holding tax. Uh, gain uh, from eligible fund received by a person are subject to flat rate 15%. Uh, stamp tax also uh, recently introduced on the stock market for uh, sale of shares and they put some uh, category and some percentage. Uh, like, 30, as an example, 33% 30, of uh, Egyptian listed company, uh, it will be exempted from a resident inv investor, rather than it will be subject, of course. Uh, capital gain tax subject to tax in uh, capital gain will be subject to in, uh, in Egypt if it's listed, non listed, there are some condition and criteria. Uh, Income tax law, it's final, it's already there from 2009, 2005, sorry. Uh, other main important uh, update in Egypt from transfer pricing perspective, 
the recently Egyptian tax authorities increased the the threshold for TB documentation from 8 million EGB to 15 million EGB. And it requires master file, local file, CBCR notification. It should be filed but exceeding 8 million EGB annually. And CBCR must be filed within 12 months and notification should be filed within by the end of the financial year. Master file and local file, there is some, some deadlines to be filed. And some uh, and, and this filing, it will be also there is a penalty of uh, non-filing such uh, document, and it's a huge penalty as well. Um, additional update, more important update also for Egypt dividends. Uh, now, now dividends from TB perspective, of course, now dividends is no longer considered as a related party transaction. Before it was considered as a related party transaction, but now it's not considered anymore. Uh, balance sheet transaction now, uh, you need to, you have to minimum documentation to be disclosed with the Egyptian tax authority. In the TB guidelines in Egypt also they listed down uh, the compliance procedures for TB uh, master file and local file uh, filing. So as an example for local file uh, procedures, you need to identify first the control transaction, select the transfer pricing method, apply uh, pricing method and determine our mislinks uh, amount. By the way, Egypt one of the first country in the region which introduced the TB guidelines and they keep updating and changing and they have a manual of, of TB their guidelines in Egypt. Uh, so this is uh, from my side. Uh, uh, sorry, I tried to cover as much as I can because it's one hour only, uh, but uh, I already I can see now many many of the questions uh, you already sending, uh, so I don't know if we will have time to to respond all of them or uh, uh, or we can send our response later. Thank you, Mr. Hani, for the presentation. Uh, thank you so much for taking us through this very engaging. I think you have covered a lot of countries and presentation was beautifully done. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, we have time for taking the questions. Uh, so, Ashna, in the chat window, do we have any questions? Also, if somebody yeah. wants to speak, they can speak. One... Just raise your hand. We can take them one by one. Yeah, one question, Mr. Hani, was on withholding taxes in case of Saudi. Because now taxes come in UAE. What will be the treatments of withholding taxes around GCC? No, say it again. The question in case A, withholding tax what? Withholding taxes, what is the treatment of withholding taxes for Saudi? Mr. Nasser, maybe you can elaborate your question a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so withholding tax, withholding tax in Saudi only applicable for any uh, foreign service payment. And Saudis, they are following uh, the payment, uh, uh, actual payment concept, not accrual base. So if you if you already transfer the amount outside the country, then you need to deduct the withholding tax based on the category. And then submit the return to uh, Saudi Authority, which is Atka. By the way, also, if we compare the withholding tax system with, for Saudi with another country in the region like, uh, like Qatar, Qatar, they are, uh, they, they are working on deemed basis. So even if, if you have a balance with the related party not settled or not paid, Qatar Authority, they have the right to impose or so ask you to settle withholding tax on such a balance. This is the only country in the region, by the way, which have such uh, position or concept for deemed uh, basis. I hope I answered you, uh, Mr. Nasser. Nasser, yeah, really my question. Yeah, please continue. Yeah, sorry, my question was uh, just how to get, uh, is there any way to get exemption? Because, uh, you know, we have seen uh, here in UAE, mainly the withholding taxes on the gross amount. And as per UAE law, you get, uh, you know, to the extent of your uh, tax liability. So yeah. most of the cases, uh, withholding tax will be more than the credit what we get. So is there any procedure? Because one is Saudi. Most of Dubai companies, they deal with uh, Oman, uh, mm. on Qatar, Saudi. Uh, if, how difficult is, uh, is there any, any way of getting exemption? If so... Mm -hmm. Uh, how how easy or how difficult it is? Yeah, see, uh, exemption, uh, first, first thing we need to consider or think about it is the tax treaty. If you have a double tax treaty between the two countries, 
then you can apply for advanced ruling from Saudi as an example. So sometimes you can have 0% tax rate, uh, like, like interest payment. For reality, can be 10 instead of 15. Sometimes can be uh, 15, sometimes can be, in some countries uh, like Uzbekistan, it will be 7%. So it depends. So if you have any tax treaty between uh, Saudi or uh, Saudi and UAE, first, first exemption you can seek is to get uh, the tax treaty benefit based on the advance ruling. In UAE here, based on the corporate tax law here, here there is a, a credit, foreign tax credit concept. But with some condition, shouldn't be exceed the tax rate here in UAE. So if you if you pay of deduction happen in Saudi as an example with fifteen percent, then you will not be able to claim only nine percent here. So you will lose the difference between fifteen and nine. So try try to to get any benefit based on the tax rate. Okay. okay but uh, any procedure. Uh... Any any information? Uh, procedure, yeah, procedure. It's it's uh, it's it, it, you need to file an application to uh, either Zatka or GTE or Romani Tax Authority. It's called advance ruling application. Each country have a di a different format. It's not a standard format for all GCC, and each country requires some certain document. As, a, as an example, in Saudi, like I mentioned, you you, you need to fill and stamp and sign and attest the form Q seven B along with the TRC. And the contract you have or the agreement you have to avail such uh, benefit. And you submit the application through that portal. There is a standard format. And within 45 working days, you must respond to you. If they accept it, then you can have this exemption on contract base or transaction base or a period base. Okay? Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Hani, in this case, which you have just said, just sorry, you want to understand this question a little bit more. In this case, you said 45 days is the waiting period for the advance ruling, right? Yes, correct. So Maximum. period, if there are transactions, so you have you continue to charge higher rate and like, for example, how will you get the difference back? No, see, what uh, we have two cases here. First one that you are applying for us once ruling for a, for future transaction or, or or just recently signed a new contract with no payment, which it is okay. If you wait for 45 working days, it's a fine. You can get it. So case number two that you already have payment on pipeline or already uh, 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 already want to send some payment from from, uh, from Saudi to another country. Then at this time or this case, you need to deduct the withholding tax based on the original tax rate. And once you get the ruling, you will file a uh, refund application, which you will get it because you already have a, a ruling from that. Okay. As I mentioned also again, some of the taxpayer or companies, they are taking the position from day one to follow or apply the reduced rate. But this is very risky because if you wait for another one year or two year and that will come and ask you what's the difference plus penalties. Right. Yes, uh, Ashna. Mr. Sujit had a question. Can he unmute himself? Sujit Nair. Yeah. Mr. Sujit, you can ask this question because I think it will be better if you can explain. And also, anybody has a question, please raise your hand and unmute yourself to ask. Uh, hi, I have a question here. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir. This was regarding a transaction between... Uh, we, see, it's a transaction between Dubai... Bahrain and Saudi. So we sold one machine to Bahrain customer. And what happened when the Saudi customer was interested in the machine. So from Bahrain to Saudi, we for the lower customs, we declared the machine at a lower value. For example, 560,000 USD. But uh, the uh, customer in Saudi had to pay us. So the actual value is 900,000 900, USD. So what has happened for customs, we stated at a lower value. So how you will tackle that because the customer is in Saudi and the transaction happened between, uh, I mean, Saudi and us. Yeah, so I will ask you one uh, another question. Uh, yeah. For for the value which customer you paid to you, where is Correct. it recorded? Is it recorded in Saudi entity or Bahrain entity? Uh, uh, Bahrain entity was uh, not our customer. It was, you know, the uh, it was yeah. they were just holding a machine. So actually yeah, know, the customer is Saudi. Now, the Saudi customer, he paid to you yes. this 900 million, uh, 900,000, correct? $900,000, yeah. Oh. He paid to who? Which entity? Which UA entity? 
U entity? Yeah. So it's exported machine, not not nothing reduced. It's exported one. So nothing, you don't have any entity in Saudi. No, we don't have any entity in Saudi. We have uh. we had sold the machine to a Bahrain customer. So this uh. Saudi customer was interested in buying the machine. So he said to us, okay, can you give that machine to us? So we transferred the machine from Bahrain to Saudi at a lower custom. So we sold that, I mean, we for customs, we showed at 560,000 USD. USD. Mm -hmm. But actually, mm -hmm. the value which a customer paid us from Saudi to us is 900,000 US dollars. So the customer is facing an issue. So he's a little worried because tomorrow if Zakat comes and checks, so we'll check how your customs value is $560,000, whereas you are paying 900,000 USD. So how we will tackle that issue? No, but, yeah, yeah. No, I see... Uh, uh... Uh, it's it's I, I I don't see any big issue or big risk for your customer because he is he's bought this machine from other country uh, and he settled the amount based on the invoice I believe you you invoiced him correct correct oh ah, but the, the invoice value is higher by yeah the invoice value is higher as regards to the customs declaration so he will he is worried about what what will happen no, no. if there is an audit no wait wait the custom declaration which is called bayan in Saudi. Which okay. values? Which values included? The same uh, invoice value you invoiced your customer. No, or it is. Value? No, no. It, the invoice value is nine hundred thousand. The custom value shown, while uh, I mean for clearance is five sixty thousand ah, dollars. So there is okay. a difference of around uh, yeah three forty no, thousand dollars. A, no, it's a risk. <laughs> it's a risk because because now because now your customer is is claiming. Higher expense because he will claim this one as a cogs uh, in his books and records. So he's deducting Correct. from his base or tax base. However, the machine value itself, based on the customs records, lower. So Correct. it's 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 a, it's a two issue here. You have a two issue here. One one from your customer side on uh, on front of uh, Zatka in relation to claiming uh, the expenses higher than already imported, and one from customs. Correct. Because it's one authority now, so customs department can can fire back him saying you already uh, paying higher value and declared lower value. So we need to declare Perfect. same value in customs and pay customs based on it. So, try so to what he it. can what he needs to do now. He needs to uh, see two two steps he need to do. Uh, to first one to correct the value with the with the customs department. And okay. if it's approved and uh, customs department are okay, he can declare the, the same with in his Zakat declaration or tax declaration. If customs so he has to go for an amendment. You mean to say? No, I mean it's amendment. You have a bayan and custom clearance certificate, correct? Okay. Uh, may I ask? Yeah. Uh, may I ask the time which this case happened? It exceeds uh, three months. It happened in February, so five months. Um, yeah, we are still okay. Customs department okay. can accept that uh, correction of amount. It's okay. They will not challenge him. Assume, okay. assume they said no. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you you can settle only the customs duty on the difference without correcting the value. Correcting the value, then second okay. step, he will not be able to claim the nine hundred thousand in his Zakat declaration or return. Okay. We need to declare only the customs value because there is a reconciliation will happen between. Uh, the car department and customs department in Zatka. And if there is a mismatch happen, they will penalize him. Okay. So he need to make okay. sure that the two figures are the same. Okay. Got your point, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Hani. There is one more question somebody asked me. Like, is there any update on the GCC VAT linking uh, status? That still is still no. the still no, still no. Well, they are still no. I know, I know, because this one. We will keep asking and we keep even yes, we keep asking also. <laughs> All right. One more thing I just want to ask you. Can you show shed some light on uh, on the way how the authorities are working? Like in UAE, we know this FTA getting answers is a very lengthy process. Yeah. How is your experience with the other locations? And which one you think is really, really very, very good at it? See, uh, if you ask me uh, for the region, uh, the worst country you can uh, face, Kuwait. Okay, <laughs> they are not responding at all. Uh, Saudi, they are okay. They are okay on responding, but uh, within 45 working days, they are not never responded before this uh, 45. 
days. 45 days, one and a half month. Ah, 45 working days, but they are responding. They are, they must, because it's based on new revelations there, they must either they reject and give you the reason, or they can uh, approve, or they can share their view. It's a must, they must respond. Uh, Twitter, they are not very active in responding. Uh, and some of the cases, you need to visit them physically to, to accelerate the process. Uh, Bahrain, is, Bahrain is good, they are also active. Uh, Saudi, uh, as I mentioned, Oman, uh, not very active. So if, if we rank them on the region, I can say uh, KSA uh, first, uh, UAE, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait. Okay, fine. Mr. Nirav has a question. Nirav, sir, can you please unmute and ask the question? Yeah, thank you very much, Hani, for the very useful presentation. I have a question which is somewhat relating to what Rishi mentioned. Now, UAE has just introduced a corporate tax law. There's, there are guides and everything. But still, if you want more, some transactions are there very specific and you want to look at the tax implication, the guidance which is available is very limited. Which, in your view, would be a like a similar jurisdiction, mature jurisdiction, which can be referred? Just as a reference point, it may not be having a binding effect with the authorities. But if you want to interpret certain transactions from the taxation standpoint, which should be that alternative jurisdiction uh, can be referred? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mr. Nrav. Uh, your voice, I'm not, you, I'm not feeling well. I believe your voice is not uh, good. Huh? Should I repeat my question? Yeah, your voice was not clear enough. Yeah. Just a little is, slow, please. Is it better now? Yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah. So my question is now UA corporate tax law has uh, limited, you can say, guides and uh, clarifications. Yes, if yes. you want to interpret the taxability of any transaction, mm. is there any other country which can be seen as more or less like similar to UAE? And ah. for a reference, I can refer that jurisdictions, taxability or the guidance is available. For uh, like interpretation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got I got your question now, Mr. Nalaf. See, if if uh, if we compare uh, UAE with other countries in GCC, uh, the most nearest country that we can refer to is KSE and Qatar. These two countries, because they almost have same provision, same concept, same. Uh, they have also uh, a practice experience, uh, not uh, not uh, with FTE here. But FTA, is, uh, maybe for, uh, for, for our internal purpose that we can refer or to, to present something. But FTA, they are not obliged to follow other countries' regime, as you know. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can use it as a leverage. They, uh, I see other countries, they do the same uh, to educate them. Okay? And maybe, they, by the way, I have a personal, uh, personal experience with FTA in one of the cases. We can speak offline, you and me, on this one. Because we presented a case which happened in KSA, very similar to UE, and they listen to us. The FTA, they, they, are, uh, they are, it was very interesting to hear from us what's happening in other countries. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Mr. Naveen, can you please unmute and ask the question? Uh, yes, sir. This is Naveen here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, for your wonderful and meaningful presentation. And now in the UAE, UAE VAT legislation, we have a concept of uh, implementing states which hmm. has not been implemented or just has the concept currently. But as you explained, the, the VAT is being implemented in the GCC states slowly one by one. So do you think in the future, this implementing states is uh, going to evolve and there's going to be a kind of a relaxation in terms of trade with the GCC states? Yes, I can answer you with yes, but with some, con uh, maybe they can put some condition again, quickly in case again, as an example, before they was uh, accept accepting to uh, to apply 0% for any uh, exported service. Okay. But recently they said, no, if there's, if you have a vendor or supplier outside KSA, but he is involving in the project inside KSA, then it will not be subject to 0%, even you are paying to this foreign supplier. So, they change their position. However, for GCC framework, maybe the place of uh, supply, it can be, it can be followed. I, I, my expectation, it can be. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. 
just uh, one question mr hani from my side uh, with this uh, saudi promoting headquarters headquarters do you hmm. see a drift from uh, uae businesses shifting to saudi more how is it how is your experience when saudi came up with this headquarter yeah i i i noticed uh, many of the business they are uh, swiss transferring to uh, ksa as a rhq especially with the companies or the group which are dealing with the governmental bodies there because it's a must to be present there as RHQ. However, I can tell you something also a little bit funny. Uh, some of the companies here in UE, what they did, they moved RHQ and they met the condition, like 15 people, premises, like we, we discussed on the presentation, the webinar. However, in reality, the team is still here in UE and they're still managing the activity from UE. But they show, they show to Saudi authorities and they, in the media, they put some videos, uh, our, our new RHQ here and there. But okay. in reality, I know people are still here. They didn't move and they still perform an activity from here. So it's, yeah, I think depends. that is where the substance provision has come with qualification perhaps uh, in Saudi now. Because the poem is still sitting in UAE and, you know, we do a lot of transfer pricing and this question we get a lot of times because of... Uh, um, most of the time, the poem, the effective management is still in UAE, but they are advertising as headquartered, shifted to Saudi. And yes. But how are the tax authorities taking this? Yeah, but be careful also, Ashna, for the new proposed law in KSA. As I mentioned, they are introducing BOM concept. Mm. And uh, when you are entering Saudi market for RHQ, you must have a, a, an assessment for pros and cons. Because you can be happy now. With the incentive, I am entering Saudi market now. Get this incentive, and after one year, you get be you will be hit by BOMBE other aspect. So if you are if uh, if you have a RHQ in Saudi now, and you have tax incentive, okay, and later you the Saudi authority found that you are effectively managed your entity from RHQ in Saudi, and this one of these activities is not listed either and mandatory or optional. So that can also you will have the right to tax you as a BOM. So you should be very careful on, on, on tax planning and to enter in. And by the way, I, I discussed with some people in the market, they, after assessing the position for RHQ, they refused, said, no, I can sacrifice with one or two transactions with the governmental authority, but I will not buy, put myself in a future risk with a huge liability. Thank you so much. I think we are just across 7.30. I have one last question. After that, um, we can close uh, this session. And uh, please also let us know if you can share your slides with um, all the members. Sure. Uh, can, is it okay if you can share your contacts details if they want to reach out to you? Sure. So my question is, uh, can you please uh, tell a little bit about uh, the, the compulsory requirement of Arabic? Uh, in terms of you know submitting the document, like in UA you can submit in English, but in how is in Saudi, Egypt, and the other places, how how important it is? Yeah, so uh, in in other countries like Saudi, Egypt, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, it must be in Arabic. Even the regulation itself for all of these countries, countries, the communication language must be in Arabic. Filing must be in Arabic. Okay, so all of even in Zatka, if you log on in Zatka portal, you can switch it to English. And you can read whatever is there, but when it comes to filing, must be in Arabic. Must be in Arabic. And uh, by the by the way, UE even the official language with communication with FTA is in Arabic. If you read yes. the regulation, but yes. to simplify the, the the interaction between FTA and the taxpayers, they, they are accepting to to communicate in English. But mm. if you go for a bill or litigation in FTA here, must be in Arabic. So it's very needed, and it's. Uh, we have to manage. It's uh, it's one of condition what you can do. Right. Okay. I think thank you so much uh, for giving us the time and your such a you know high you know experience which is coming out. Definitely, we gained a lot out of it. Chairman Sab, you want to say a few words before we go? No. Thank you very much, Mr. Ani, for giving time to the chapter and sharing your rich experience in the this part of the region, particularly Texas. And look forward to further engage with you in the future for such type of opportunity. And as DC has told that if you allow, we can circulate your presentation to the members and your contact detail also to take the help wherever the members need it, guidance or some more information about the Texas and in the region. 
So once again, thank you very much and thank you all participants for joining and making this learning session fruitful for all. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm really, really honored to be with you today. And uh, accept my apology if, if I uh, cover some points quickly, because I know this, I have only one hour. And uh, if we can plan for the future, maybe for special or dedicated uh, webinar or workshop for main points or main, main topics, like one of the questions I saw in the beginning of this uh, webinar today, someone asked if we can cover e-invoice in Saudi. We can. We can give a one dedicated workshop for invoicing in Saudi. And other aspects like TB, Zaka, whatever you choose and you feel from the member, it's very important to them to understand. Of course, I would be happy, more than happy to join and share also some. No, uh, no, thank you very much. Yes, you are right. E-invoicing e also going to be introduced in the UAE next year. So it's an important subject. Thank you so much. I think Ashna is already comfortable. She, she found the, the next speaker already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, I think have a nice weekend. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of the day with your family and good evening to all of you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you all. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.